Hi everyone, we're going to graph the rational function f of x by hand. Uh, this is an introductory video and we're not using parent functions. We're just getting the concept of graphing a rational function. Some of the basic key points you need. So we're going to be looking for uh, uh, the graph and it has two or more branches. Um, some, sometimes they look like that or they can look like this, they're curvy, and, um, or sometimes you'll have two, that doesn't look good, um, sometimes you'll have them looking like this, without this piece, and that would be your two branches, and if you had three, sometimes that would be something like this, you have, you have something like that, and it's based off your asymptotes, the asymptotes, uh, provide the framework for the graph. So let's look for the vertical asymptote first. That one's usually the easiest one. It's where your denominator cannot equal zero. So that would be the x uh, would have to equal negative three. We don't want it to equal negative three because that would be undefined. Therefore, um, our vertical asymptote is x equals negative three. So that's a line. Asymptotes are lines. All right, now the horizontal is a little more conceptual. So let's look at that. That means as my x gets larger and larger, what does my y value get closer and closer to? They're calling that's the value of b. But what does that value get closer to? For example, let's say I put in uh, 10 for x. So that's not too big, but we're squaring it. So that would be 13 squared. That's 2 divided by 169. That's very close to 0. Now if you put a, even a larger number in, so if I plug in, say, a million, and add this little 3 here, and square it, this is definitely very close to 0. So that means you have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. It will never hit zero. It will never hit zero, but it gets very close to zero. So what we're do, going to do is graph these two lines and then uh, find some points um, to help us get the graph more accurate. So we had x equals uh, negative three. That was your vertical asymptote. It's almost like translating the axis a bit. So this is x equals negative 3. And then we also had y equals 0. So y equals 0 is for your uh, horizontal asymptote. So now this is our framework and where our graph should be symmetric. Now we're going to just plot a few points and just know there's some symmetry here. This square is going to um, make a difference here. So let's plug in um, negative 2. I want to see what's going on this side, the right side of negative 3. So if I plug in negative 2, I get 2, and this is going to be negative 2 plus 3 is 1 squared. That's going to be 2. So negative 2 gets mapped to 2. Okay, let's plug in 0. If I plug in 0, this is 0 here. I'm going to get um, 2 over 9. So that's getting closer and closer to 0. And then if I plug in a number here, it goes up in this area. So your graph on this side of the y, um, x equals negative 3 goes like this. And it's never going to cross because remember, our uh, horizontal asymptote will never get to y equals 0, but it gets very close. So there it is. Now let's see what's going on on the other side of negative 3. So let's plug in negative 4. I'll plug in negative 4. I get uh, 2 divided by negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1 squared is 1. So that goes to 2. So what happens is you get the same thing on the other side. It's going to be in quadrant 2. So we'll put a point here, 
and then just graph it like that. That's the conceptual part. This square uh, here made both of these be in quadrant one and quadrant. Well, this got into quadrant two, but if you look at if as this is your axis, that's what it looks like. Now these two uh, branches here should, if you fold up on this line, x equals negative three should match up. And that's it. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.